I just wanted to thank you all for coming this evening. What a lovely crowd, and it's really a very special evening. I want to say a, a big thank you to our artist, Ara Oshagan. There was a lot of work, as you can imagine, that went into the um, to this exhibition, and it is, uh, I think, absolutely beautiful. I hope you all are enjoying it and the transformation of this gallery since last year at this same time, almost, almost a year ago when we opened On the Edge with Joan Quinn's um, artwork. And it was, um, we, were, we were a little bit nervous because we weren't quite sure how we were going to follow that. But this has really um, just been a wonderful, wonderful addition to our, our gallery and to our museum. And I, we are very proud. And so on behalf of the entire board and our wonderful staff of our team from the Armenian Museum, Jason, Berge, Gary Lynn Sinanian, Susan Sinanian, Elias, and Dr. Demekian. Um, so much that goes into this, and I'm going to let Jason speak of that. He's been here day in and day out. Um, Vicki, thank you for sharing him with us for <laughs> all these months. It's been, um, I know, a lot of work. But I, again, thank you all for being here, and I am very, very happy to turn the mic over to our executive director, Jason Sahikian. Thank you, Michelle. I do, I do want to announce that um, this show is actually sponsored by Michelle Collegian in, in memory of the late Haig Der Manuelian, who was one of the founders, instrumental founders of this museum. And she decided to sponsor the show because of his true passion for the Armenian manuscripts, which are reflected in the exhibit and how he helped us build our collection of manuscripts over the last 50 years. Um, this gallery is actually named after Haig and his wife, Adele. So thank you, Michelle. Um, putting the show together, it was, it was a challenge because we had such a major exhibition last year, but we've been talking with Ara about doing an exhibit for the last couple of years. So the show, as you can tell, it, it checks a lot of boxes of things that are important to us at the Armenian Museum and our mission. Um, some of it relating to being in diaspora, issues of Armenian cultural identity, um, the cross between the Armenian manuscripts that we display in our galleries. I hope you have a chance to see them on the first floor. This show touches on Artsakh. I mean, the, the photographs on the manuscripts are refugees now from Shushi that Ara documented. Um, so it brings a lot of the contemporary issues to the gallery, which is sometimes hard to do in a, in a museum, to, to reflect on the current issues. Um, we also introduced uh, something new for the museum. We have an audio tour for this show. So we have devices in the front, in the, in the media room, where people can get an audio tour and listen to Ara's narration of the six different parts of the exhibit. Another thing that was just exciting about this show, it brings color into the gallery. I hope you'll read about the selection of this red. There's a tag on the wall that explains why we chose this red. Some of you may know. Um, also the scale. I mean, the size, these are larger than life um, images. These are the largest images we've actually ever exhibited in the gallery. He brought things in on fabric and we hung these larger than life murals. So it adds this excitement and the, um, the installation of the Himayils too. Just an introduction to uh, Ara, before he says a few words, he is a, a diasporic artist. He's a curator and a cultural worker. Ara has published three books. Uh, one of the books is available in our shop now. Um, he's an artist in residence at the 18th Street Art Center in Santa Monica and a curator at Reflect Space Gallery in Glendale. So, Without further ado, Ara, if you'd like to come up and say a few words about this exhibit, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you. Thank you all for coming here. Uh, I want to thank Jason and his staff for the tremendous 
cooperation that they brought and, and the ability to do an exhibition like this, you know, it's not easy to, to be able to do this. And I want to thank uh, Michelle for making it happen. And I'm very happy to have my wife and my son here uh, also at the opening, it's special for me. Uh, to, to show work here, you know, um, I've known this museum for many years. I showed some work downstairs many, many years ago, but to have an exhibition here is kind of a dream come true for me. So this is a really, really important moment for me. This is the only Armenian institution in the United States, uh, museum institution, to show our work. Um, we have one coming up in Glendale soon, so we'll have one on each coast, but this is right now, this is one that's very, very special and important. Uh, as I said, the exhibition started at Stockton University, uh, curated by Ryan. Uh, this is an expanded version of it. Um, and to show to so many of, my, of the series in my work here is special for me. A lot of my work connects to, um, the, connects to uh, things in the museum, um, museum collection. So uh, pages from illuminated manuscripts, uh, the vertical hanging scrolls, the Hemaeils, which this, this museum has in their collection, are also very special for me. So to show work that's connected to that, to, to think about how you can have ancient manuscripts, but also try to reflect on them in a contemporary space is, uh, is very special. There are many linked, uh, interlinked, and entangled theories here. Uh, the work looks at the past, it witnesses the present, imagines the future, Photography, collage, installation, film. Uh, it's about diasporic presence, and I use the word presence here very specifically because it implies the past as well as it implies the future. Um, homeland, of course, work from Artsakh. It's about Los Angeles, it's about Beirut, it's about Armenia, Artsakh. It's also about family. Uh, it's about the afterlives of this location, colonization, memory, identity, community, collective history. Um, it's a lot. I mean, if anybody went through it, you know there's, there's a lot. And it's complicated and it's layered. So it requires a little bit of effort uh, and time to access. And I urge you to spend time, if you have, to, to read and to engage. And it's all intentional. I th it's all intentional because our work, our, our lives are complicated, are layered and multidimensional. And I, I don't, I, my work does not shy away from that. Um, as a diasporic Armenian, my relationship to various histories and places is complex. Having inherited leg legacies of removal and violence from genocide, like many of you here, displaced from Beirut personally, and perhaps many of you have also been displaced from other places, living in multiplexed Armenian diasporic life in Los Angeles, for instance, for the last 40 years, traveling to Armenia and Artsakh for the past 20 years, uh, we know these are all sites of multiple and multi-generational disruption and upheaval. So this is all kind of part, of part of the work, if not obvious, but subterranean in a way. Kind of an arc of history across almost 100 years. Specifically, you know, I have work that has to do with genocide survivors and that connects to 100 years, but also there's work here from my grandfather who was himself uh, he was himself uh, exiled from his indigenous land, so it does go back 100 years. I want to echo the essay here, who Harag Vartanian wrote this essay about my work, who has, it's very wonderful to have him here in our midst from New York. Um, I want to echo one of the things that he said about this work is that uh, there's no nationalistic agenda here. You know, if there is a certain happenstance as being, in being Armenian and inheriting a certain family and history, uh, but my work reflects on that through my own lived experience. It's a work of witness and imagination. It's about process of being and seeing and imagining new futures. Articulating a presence, like I was saying a little bit earlier. Um, and perhaps in, in an image, space, time, memory, place, it can start a process of healing. I consider the diaspora as a space of radical possibility and creativity, a place of imagination and mending. So I want to talk briefly about two of the series here. Um, 
just to give you a little bit of a, a taste of it. Um, so the first work I want to talk about is this work that you see in the windows here. And uh, we were very fortunate. First thing that I noticed when I first walked into the space were the windows. I was like, we have to do something. I told Jason, we have to do something with these windows. And this, this work was specifically created for, this, for these windows. And in the afternoon when the, window, when the light hits it, it, they really, really beautifully glow. Um, so these are portraits that I took almost a decade ago in Artsakh, in Armenia, um, of, uh, of residents of the town of Shushi. If, if you haven't heard of the town of Shushi, it's a very important cultural center in that area. Um, and as you may know, the recent war of 2020, Azerbaijani state attacked Armenia, Artsakh, and colonized major parts of Artsakh. And Shushi was one of the towns that it was, it was colonized by Azerbaijan. And so these, um, these residents of Shushi are now no longer living there. They've been exiled from their land. So behind them are pages for Armenian illuminated manuscripts from across the Armenian highland. And I take the Armenian highland to be very vast from all the way west, all the way uh, to um, Erzinga and that area all the way to the east to the edge of, of Artsakh. This is a very last, vast major area for me and pages coming from that area and I connect the resident now who is a, the person who is now a refugee with that pages from those manuscripts and those manuscripts beyond the religious dimension of them really represent for me a history, kind of an identity, a cultural identity, a DNA. And so it kind of imagines a future where the deracinated uh, person, indigenous Armenian deracinated from their, from their indigenous lands can come back together with that history. It kind of imagines a future like that. The other work I want to quickly touch about is, uh, so you see the big mural over here um, in, in this work. Uh, it's called the Beirut Memory Project. And then also this photo here is part of that series. And then along the red wall, the white framed photos. Um, so I was, as I was mentioning, I was born in Beirut. I grew up in Beirut. The Beirut Lebanese Civil War displaced us and, and parallel to so many displacements for us over the last hundred years, be it from Beirut, from Syria, from Iran, from Armenia. Um, this work kind of looks across that divide, that displacement. So in 2014, I returned to Beirut and I, and I took photographs in Beirut. Uh, and so in this work, the black and white photos are, black and, black and white parts of the images are from photos from today that I took recently when I returned to Beirut. And the color parts are images from before my displacement from Beirut, or in this particular case, images from well, aftermath of war, the ruins of a city. Um, so it kind of, in the same image space, it connects across this kind of rupture, this kind of displacement that I experienced. Uh, personally, deeply, deeply affected me, and I think deeply affected us as a, as a community. Um, and it speaks about this, this bridging of the two, the past and the present, and a, a conversation in this, in this image space that I created. Thank you very much for coming. It's a really a pleasure and special moment for me to be here, to be in this space, um, and enjoy.